What's up everyone? Today we're gonna pick up right where we left off in the last video, and we're gonna be animating the sections of this responsive pie chart. So if you missed the first part where we built all of the base layers of this particular slide, you can watch it at the link on your screen now. If you've already seen it, let's jump in and get started. We're gonna start by animating this base circle group. So we're gonna select it, then click on the animation tab, and on this left side menu, we're gonna click wheel in. Then we're gonna open the animation pane. We're gonna change the start to with previous because we want these animations to start as soon as we open this slide. And then we wanna change the duration to 1.5 seconds. Next, we're gonna select the raised circle group in the center. We're gonna click fade in, and we're gonna change the start to with previous. Next, we'll select the center circle pressed, and we're going to select a basic zoom animation. Now, you can also use the regular zoom animation, but I used the basic zoom for this one. Again, under timing, change the start to with previous, and then change the delay to half a second. Next, select the favorite pies text, and we're going to do a wipe in animation, change the start to with previous, and change the delay to half a second. Next, click on one of the gradient icons, go over to the Shape Format tab, and click on the Selection pane. You're gonna collapse the key lime and strawberry gradients, and then you're gonna hold Shift and click to select all of the gradient icons, just so you can see where they are, and then click on the eye icon next to all of them to hide them temporarily. Then click to select the pressed in apple icon, go back to the animations tab and click fade in. Open the animations pane again and change the start to with previous. Next, we're gonna reselect the pressed apple icon, double click the animation painter and apply it to the rest of the pressed icons. Once you've done that, click again to deselect the animation painter and then we're going to change the delay timings. So the apple is going to be zero and then we're going to increase by a quarter of a second on each one of these other ones, starting with key lime, which will be 0.25 second delay. Once you have these timings set, reopen the selection pane, and just by selecting all of these gradient icons, they will reappear. And now we're ready to add all of our responsive animations, so let's start by animating the apple pie. Just select it and click fade in. Then open the animations pane, open the triggers menu, and change to on click of apple pressed. Next, click on the apple icon on top of the pie, and add a wipe animation. Change the trigger first to on click of apple pressed, and then change the start timing to with previous. Next, re-click on the apple big icon, click the animation painter, and paint onto the apple gradient. You'll then need to select the apple gradient item in the animation pane, and change the trigger to on click of apple pressed, and the start to with previous. Next, select the apple text and add a wipe in animation. Under effect options, Change the property to from left, then change the trigger to apple pressed, change the start to with previous, and change the delay to half a second. And it is important that you do these steps in this order because if you change the trigger, sometimes the start timing will change and the delay will change if you change the start timing. So you definitely wanna do it in this order. And finally, click on the apple text, click on the animation painter and paint it onto the 30% here. Then select 30% over in the animation pane, change the trigger to on click of apple pressed, change the start timing to with previous, and change the delay to 0.75 seconds. So these five animations are what will occur in order when we click on the pressed icon here on the right side. So we'll have the pie animated in, the icon animated in, this gradient come in, and these two pieces of text come in. Now we need something to happen when we click on this gradient icon to have all of these disappear back out. Once we complete this section, we'll be able to copy these animations onto every other section and save us a lot of time. So let's do the elimination animations. Now we want these eliminations to occur in the reverse order that these items came in. So we're gonna start by animating the apple big icon and we're gonna add a wipeout animation to this one. And for this one, all we have to do is change the trigger to on click of apple gradient. Next, we'll select our pie and we're going to add a fade out animation. Once again, change the trigger to on click of apple gradient, change the start timing to with previous and add a delay of 0.5 seconds. Next, we'll select our apple gradient icon. We'll add a wipe out. We'll change to on click of apple gradient. We'll change the start timing to with previous and we'll add a delay of 0.75 seconds. Next, we'll select the apple text. We'll also add a wipe out animation. We'll change the trigger to on click of apple gradient. We'll change the effect options to from right. We'll change the start timing to with previous and we'll change the delay to half a second. Then we'll select the 30% text. And remember, don't use the animation painter here because we're doing different animation than for the apple. 
Also select the wipeout animation, change the trigger to on click of Apple Gradient, change the property to from right, change the start to with previous, and leave no delay. And that's it, we've animated everything for the Apple. So now let's animation paint all of these animations onto the other items and I'll show you what changes to make on this first one and let you do the rest. The easiest way to copy over these animations is to copy them in order of the animations that you installed for the Apple pressed trigger. So start with the Apple Pie, which is the first one on this list. Click on the Animation Painter and copy it over to the key line. Then click on the Apple Big, copy that one over, and copy the rest over in order. So next we'll do the Apple Gradient to the Key Lime Gradient, the Apple Text to the Key Lime Text, and the 30% to the 15%. Now what you'll see in the animation pane is that all of these animations are up in this top section except for one. And if you scroll down, you'll find that the key line gradient has found its way into this trigger group. Don't worry about that for now. All you're gonna do is select all of the green animations, the intro animations. So just click on the first one and while holding command or control, click on all of the green animations so you get all of the intro animations selected together. Then scroll down to triggers, select on click, and select key lime pressed. Now, if you scroll down the animation pane, you'll see that all of these are now in order in their own group. However, they are below the key lime gradient group. And as you can see here, we want the pressed group to be above the gradient group. Now, this is because if the gradient group is above the pressed group, weird things will happen when we click these animations because these are all triggered in a sequence. So make sure that the intro animations are above the outro animations. Now, when we move these outro animations, this will be fixed and I'll show you that in just a second. So scroll back up in the animation pane, click the first and last while holding shift to select all four of these, then scroll down and holding command or control, select the key lime gradient item as well and change the trigger to on click of key lime gradient. Now, when you scroll down in the menu, you can see that by selecting all five of these, it's moved the entire key lime gradient group down below the key lime pressed group. So the last thing we have to do is select key lime big and click the up arrow to bump it up to the top. And as you can see, now this is our trigger and all of the rest of these will follow when it's clicked. So all that's left to do is use the same process we just used to create the key lime triggers to do the same for the rest of the food items around the circle. Perfect, now that we've added all those animations, your animation pane should look just like this. Last thing to do, let's test it out and see how we did. That looks terrific, guys. Now let's test each one of the section animations. Awesome, those look terrific. Now let's say you don't like cherry pie. Well, there it goes. Now you don't have to look at it anymore. And you can do the same with any of the other pies to make any combination that you want on this chart. Thanks for following along, guys. I've got some exciting new content coming out later this week. So please go ahead and hit subscribe and click that notification bell to get notified when that comes out. And until then, take care and I'll see you next time.